right, greetings everybody. In this video, I just want to talk shop. I want to show you a couple of tricks that I have and also some suggestions on how to organize and keep things clean. So stick around. The first thing I recommend anybody is get one of these little mini little shot backs. All right, this is probably my most valuable tool in the shop here. So anyhow, I'm going to show you just a real quick and dirty, not dirty, hopefully, a quick and not dirty way of emptying this thing when it gets full, because this thing gets full all the time. All right, this is probably common sense to a lot of you, but what I do is get one of these oversized, extra duty, hefty garbage bags, open it up. I place the entire vacuum cleaner, hose and cable and everything inside of here. Now you should be doing this outside, but as you can tell, it's raining outside. Anyhow, so you put the vacuum in there and then open it up. and do everything inside the bag. Then you just take out your parts and it's a dust-free zone. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is sandpaper. For some reason, I collect, hoard pieces of sandpaper. I can't seem to bring myself to throw them away. Um, so, um, what I do is I get myself a, a box a regular box, right? And I make a determination. Um, can I use this piece of sandpaper again? Or shall I be honest with myself and throw it away? It's like that song that goes, You gotta know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to throw them away. No, seriously. Um, throw away sandpaper. Don't think that, oh, I can still use this. I can still use this. Just, you know, if it has any kind of signs of wear and tear at all you know by all means there's no sense of hanging on to this stuff here just throw it away and go to the store and buy yourself some new ones for crying out loud so for me now it's like do i practice what i preach and do i throw these things away or do i hang on to them so that's the struggle and the struggle's real all right this next bit of advice is stuff i tell myself over and over and over and over again constantly remind myself so pick your top 10, 10 tools, pick your top 10 tools, identify those tools and have those tools right in front of you. So that's what I'm going to do right now. All right. I've identified my top 10. And the reason why we identify these is because I want to keep these as close to me as possible all the time. My Shintu Rasp, number one on the list. I keep it right here underneath my shelf. There's a box of uh, files right there. The other one here is my little fretting. And I put that on the shelf right in front of me. It stays there all the time. These um, fretting saws that you get. This one here, seriously, MVP. Um, I use this guy for everything, like notching out, trimming. A little mini fretting hammer. This thing's worth its weight in gold. Keep it. There's a little hook off camera right here. That's where that thing goes. Wire cutters. Everybody's best friend here. I have a, a, a box that's set down right here on the shelf. You can't see it. And all of my little handhelds go right there in that box. It's like, this is my workspace. I just reach over right here. Boom. I got it. So I don't, even, I don't even have to walk anywhere. I just, right there. Um, rulers. I have a whole host of rulers here, all just hanging on a nail right in front of me because rulers are important. You want to measure twice and cut once, right? 
course the soldering iron. Sorry about that. This thing here is, I have a little uh, desk, a little workstation right here at an angle. So that thing just kind of lives there. Whenever I need it, I just reach over, turn it on, turn it up. And my solder's right here on a hook. My wire is also right here, all within arm's reach. So that, so the main, yeah, the, the, the point is, is that you got to have everything identified and then strategically placed right in front of you. There should be a space for everything. And then of course, everything in its space. The next is the little Phillips. And this, this has got a little tip on it for the little tiny screws that I use for the tuners. Right. And so I'm always doing this. And so I need this guy handy. So it goes on the shelf right in front of me also. And then Ah, oh, there you are. I see you. Um last but not least. Now this guy here um I have extra batteries, right? Cuz when the battery dies, I just put out the new battery and get the new one. This thing here is um essential. I use this for everything whether it's drilling, screwing, um, and so I have, I, and along with that is the, the dedicated bits. Okay. I have a, a dedicated bit for the tuner, a dedicated bit for the string through, a dedicated bit for the, for the little tiny screws that holds the tuners in a dedicated bit for the, uh, input jack, dedicated bit for the grommets on the tuner. And of course the little line there, and also a dedicated bit for the um, um, disc piezo in the center of the saddle. That being said, we have a dedicated bit for the tuner. Dedicated bit for the circular sound holes. For the big mamma jammies. So yeah, so um, this guy here, along with the bits, crucial and essential. So that takes me into my, to my very final uh, piece of advice and that is are you ready for it and that is going to be establishing the secondary zone and identifying the items that's going to keep in the secondary zone what I, so I, we've established our primary zone right that's the area that's every, you know right around here that I have all my top tier i'm talking about the second tier which is the space just beyond the reach zone and so what i have in those areas are things like um, uh, well, tapes, right? I got all my tape over here, uh, paper towels, clean up stuff, um, screws, all shape, shapes and sizes. Uh, of course my, my sandpapers over here and my, uh, my Q-tips, my steel wool, my stain, my, um, uh, spray paints, all of these are in the secondary zone so that they don't clutter up my primary zone. All right, so that's it. Um, and then also, um, organization, you know, nothing is more frustrating, right? Than it's like, where the heck did I put that freaking metric left-handed hammer? Um, so you spend more time wasting looking for stuff, you know, when you could be building and being creative. So anyhow, so I hope you take into account some of these uh, things so that you can be more efficient, more effective, and more creative in your cigar box guitar builds. All right, I'm gonna leave you a little outro. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.